that's just kind of white. Greetings, everyone. Free the land. This is Foundations of the Nation. Oh, I don't have our banner up. Let me put that up. So folks know what they're chiming in on. And we have taken a short mini break, but not really a break, but you know, we've had conflicting important things to handle during this time, but we're gonna chime in today for a short bit. Um, I am Sama I. Mama Ayo, Free the Land. Yes, and today we're gonna talk about about high love. Yet yeah, first, 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 uh, you know, we gotta come in. Great. Foundation, Foundation of the nation, nation. is the family, family. Man, woman, and child. man, woman, and child. Foundation, Foundation of the nation. United we stand tall, together we never fall. All right. Yes. Okay. So today, <laughs> our, like, we, like we said before, our topic is high love. Now, Mama Ayo, where do we want to start? Do we want to start off with what high love means and where we want to start this conversation? Because oh, it can start anyway. Well, just um, to just to preface what we're talking about, of course, we uh, operate under the Ministry of Health and Society and under the provisional government of the Republic of New Africa. And uh, really, our mission over these last few years is to uh, tap our people into uh, healing, making sure that they're uh, becoming the best new African society that there can be. And so we We've been addressing many, 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 many topics. And uh, we always say that probably the biggest challenge to new Africans is to heal from the generations upon generations of heart trauma. So we want to just deal with that. What do we mean by heart trauma? Which leads us to our topic on what, what are we talking about high love? Yeah, that's what that's kind of how we want to start off. So, yeah. Okay. So, so, so heart trauma and high love. Yes. Um, you know. Directly related. Directly related because we know that um, most of us, most, uh, most Black people in America, new Africans in America, have experienced generations upon generations of heart trauma, which simply means our heart has been broken. Why? Why has our heart been broken? Our heart has been broken because we were taken away from our motherland. You know that when you lose your mother, your heart is broken because the mother instills in you culture, instills with you uh, behavior, instills in you history, instills with you all the love and the light that is that uh, typically can be given to an individual and it is and it is reflective of the culture in which you live. So when you talk about generations upon generations of being under chattel slavery, being uh, aggressed upon, being hurt over and over again, and not really understanding why, and you won't, the only thing you could think about is because I have this deeply melanated skin, I have this tightly curled hair, I have this broad nose and, and luscious lips, and, and uh, uh, what we call bootylicious hips in most cases, is that the only reason why? Uh, uh, so when we have those things, uh, we have had trauma upon trauma that has been passed down through our families. And that heart trauma has led us to have a very, very deep self-disgust, self-hate, insecure, insecure self-image of ourselves, particularly when all you see is a European standard of what they call beauty. So when we talk about heart traumas, your heart chakra, your heart chakra needs to be worked on. It needs to be healed for yourself and for what we call your people's people's people's. So that's how I kind of want to start off, Sa. Okay. Well, we know that um, 
a lot of the the quote unquote personalities that we run in on a daily basis have <laughs> we all have our stories, right? We all have our hurt hearts. We all we uh, our, our hurt hearts. We all have particular trauma. Yet when we when we're saying that we we are now wanting to build this nation, right? Let's talk about how we deal with that trauma. You know, at first, it, first off, you have to be very extremely honest with self. A lot of times we're not honest with self. We push what we feel, what we've experienced, what whatever we've went through up underneath the rug. And the first the first step is to be honest with self. You know, we got to really admit that we are hurt because sometimes we say, oh, we good. We find you good. No, no I'm good. No, we lying. <laughs> we know we lying. You know, so we got to take that time. We got to take that time. And I know a lot of us are in a lot of different series, uh, uh, scenarios. Some of us are married. Some of us are not. Some of us work with collective. Some of us don't. Right. Uh, we, we, we find ourselves in many, many situations. Yet when we say that we're building this nation, this particular nation that we're building, the Republic of New Africa, the, the new African nation, this particular nation is rooted in collective leadership is rooted in the collective and and that's something that we have to learn how to um do because we've, we've been we've been conditioned to be so individual mama Ayo mentioned a different uh, mentioned um our historical reality well our historical reality has caused us to, to first hate ourselves you hate yourself you can it's impossible to love somebody else right so be, being being in the space of getting to where you're you accept yourself as who you are as your beautiful divine being right you you recognize your gifts your talents you acknowledge yourself you know because and I say that's extremely important because we we for the most part we have households and people who have never heard a kind word ever so, so if you have never heard a kind word ever, it's pretty difficult to say words to other people. That's all you know is hate. All you know is uh, selfishness. All you know is death. all you know is complete competition. All you know is, and so if that is if that is all you know, and we're saying we want to move and develop high love, <laughs> that means that look, that's going to be some some real work. That's going to be some real intentional work. We have to intentionally learn how to love one another because we know what our conditionings are. Absolutely. You know, that's real intentional. You know, we facing things right now where folks is, look, have no idea what love is. Probably never felt it. None of that. Right. So it's. um. <laughs> It, it's 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 a journey. Let's put it like that. The, the the high love is a journey. There's a journey within and and outside of yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. It starts within. It starts with self, though. I think I think uh, most of uh, our people know that because uh, there's a big movement over the last few years to start working on self, developing self. We've been in many 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 circles. Many 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 many. Uh, uh, workshops, conferences that has has us working on just tapping into self through meditation, uh, making sure that you are uh, activating your chakras, making sure you're eating well, making sure you're drinking plenty of liquids, making sure you're taking your herbs. And a lot of us, a lot of us have have been able to to do that as we were locked down for almost two years, there's been a, you know, kind of an explosion of people saying, Hey, I, I, I've discovered this and I'm internalizing some of these strategies, internalizing some things that work for me and mine and really, really doing that self work, that self love. But what does it mean to move and to elevate to from that self love, that community love, that family love, the nation love, the world love to, to the high love. And that that's that's our challenge because many of us, once we say we tapped in, we woke, we we, you know, we we know, uh that doesn't 
that doesn't always manifest through our actions and the light that we know that we have within because we're still dealing with uh, what I call generational traumas, personal traumas. And you made a very good point as we work on our loving ourselves. Also recognizing that we do have imperfections. We do have, we do uh, exhibit jealousy. We do speak in anger. We do um, uh, covet some what somebody else has. We do look in the mirror and say, I wish I had, I wish I was, I wish my nose was, I wish my hair was, I wish I was this, I wish I was that. All the, all the time. And it's a day, as Sister Sa says, it's a daily check-in with self. It is, it's a daily check-in with self because you could think you and I, which I do, I think I'm good, I'm good today. I'm doing some really, 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 really good things. And then all of a sudden the thought will come across your mind and you have to weigh, well, it, was that for, for me to learn a lesson? Was that for me to understand that, oh, you still have work to do on yourself? Um, it could be a conversation with a, with a colleague. It could be a conversation with family, which oftentimes it is. It could be something that flashes across the screen on TV and you begin to doubt and you begin to, uh, you know, be, be fearful of, of your journey. So high love, high love is that love that you say that I am willing, I am uh, uh, open, I am obedient, I am asking my spirit guides. I'm asking the creator. I'm asking the seraphim and the archangels. I'm asking my ancestors. I'm asking those guardian spirits to keep me on the path, keep me always loving and very, very patient with self, with self, patient with self and patient with particularly our family, our children and our grandchildren. Because some of us know, some of us know our families did the best that they could, but they oftentimes, they oftentimes uh, kind of mimicked what was done to them, what was said to them. It is this time when we deal with high love that we, that we have to say, I, I'm not gonna do those things because I know how I felt when it happened to me. I hurt. I was hurt. I'm still hurting. I'm still, it, it, it changed the trajectory of my life. If somebody told me something or something happened to me and I wasn't able to, to talk about it. And that means anywhere from uh, grief, anywhere from disappointment, anywhere from what we call those pains, those pains from uh, physical abuse, emotional abuse, the color, the color lines that we experience in our families, uh, all those things, our first relationships, uh, horrible relationships, and on and on and on and on and on. They're embedded in our hearts. They're embedded in our hearts. And we got to say, we got to be able to say, that hurt me. I'm real, real hurt about that. I may have to go, I have to go to a quiet place and let those tears run so that those things can be released so that you can work your way to high love for self and family, your children, your mate, definitely the community. Yes, indeed. And I think, you know, a crossroads with most people, you know, like you said, it's been a lot of self-work. Folks have been doing self-work. I've been seeing it, you know, it's, been, it's actually become very popular to do self-work right now, you know, which is a beautiful thing. You, you understand what I'm saying? You add to that. I am also seeing where we meet meet the crossroads in communication with one another, right? See, because, because there are still remnants of individuality, remnants of those things that we still have to work on, but we really see that when we are in community, right? When we are attempting to commune and communicate with one another, people going to trigger you. <laughs> and that's where your tests come right? Those tests in terms of that self-work that, that we've been doing, how we're able to navigate through, how we're able to humble self, right? Quiet the ego and actually listen to the next person so you can respond accordingly versus react to the trigger. 
right? These are the real tests. These are the real tests because I see it all the time. We have problems with communication. We have major problems with communication pushing through because we're not open per, per se. And I'm saying this on a general scale, open to the next person's uh, stuff. <laughs> and because we all have, we come to the table with stuff. I need, I need us to, to know that. Like we know our historical reality, yet we, we, we want everybody to come to the table perfect. We want them to come speaking how we want them to talk. We want them to come, want them to come. You, you, and that's not our reality. We have to start dealing in our reality. So high love means sometimes you got to take high road. <laughs> okay. A lot of times you got to take a high road. See, because everybody's not where you at. Everybody's not where you at in they, the journey. And sometimes you have to be patient in communication and you know, if if something is not clear, ask the question. Well, help me to understand where you're coming from more so. Because right now I'm not getting it. It's not clear to me, right? And then that forces the other person to begin to talk. And you'll find sometimes it's difficult for the other person to talk about it, right? That's why we got to, we have been, our communication has been so shut down over these hundreds of years you know what I'm saying? Just by habit, just by um, conditioning it within this particular system, just by coming up out of, um, well, no, coming up out of Chateau slavery, we still enslaved. Let's be <laughs> clear. <laughs> 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 um, you know, that is the challenge right now. That being in real life and real time. Uh, learning how to, this is something that we have to train ourselves to do learning how to commune with one another again in love, right? In love and in clarity and in truth and in righteousness. See, because a lot of times we'll get mad if something doesn't go our way and we'll just start being very abusive, right? Because we want the high, high hand. We want the high hand over it. So we'll turn into overseer again. Hmm. Absolutely. We're we'll working for um working for the enemy again it's easy it's a real it's a real thin line y'all specifically with our historical reality we got to be really really self-reflective in how we operate and how we communicate and how we are exhibiting high love specifically knowing our situation as a people right it'd be different if we was clueless but we know we done did we didn't had all the scholars do the research. We didn't. It's so many folks now that's tapping into their purpose of healing the black family and healing the black nation and healing us in terms of how we commune with one another. We we know now. <laughs> it's very evident. Now the work is being extremely honest with self in particular situations as we are communing. Are we exhibiting understanding? Right? Are we thoroughly listening to the next person? You know, because at that point, it's not just all about you. It's about I and I. So, what is the best for both parties involved, or the, all the parties involved, versus one party involved? Right. So, that's when we talk about being communal. You know, what is the 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 high love benefit for all people? all parties involved in that particular conversation as we're communing you know those are the questions we have to ask ourselves that's absolutely correct that's uh that's absolutely correct because one of the hardest things is to um take responsibility for um hurt pain selfishness that has been exhibited on your behalf on your behalf on my behalf uh, and it's very, very difficult because it's it's hard for uh, all of us to um, to really, really, really uh, say sorry and like admit to yourself. Those are those personal conversations going back in your head um, through what you consider your traumas or disappointments in your life and be able to look at yourself, your actions, how, because remember in all relationships, it takes two to fail. 
it takes two to be successful uh, across the board, whether it's sister to sister, brother, sister, mate to mate. It takes two. It takes two. And oftentimes uh, we're, we're so fiery. We're, we're fiery people because of our historical uh, realities. We've been fighting from day one. We will, we will definitely, uh, the first line of defense for us is anger. It's very evident. You can go to all department stores. You can go to any fast food place. First thing we see when we walk up is somebody that looks like us, that has an attitude with us. It is very, 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 very pleasant. Uh, it is very, very pleasant when you find that somebody comes and genuinely brings you some love and light and uh, uh, politeness. It is, it's pleasant. It starts your day. It feeds who you are. And hopefully that's a reciprocal thought. But that high love that we talk about is, is, is definitely something that uh, the community, the community uh, has to exhibit because it, it's reflective of, when I say high love, um, I'm, I'm, I'm always thinking from a, a political as, as well as a social, emotional, and economic high love filters down to you and I being safe and protected by the men, the men warriors in this community. You and I feeling community when we enter into a space where sisters and children are gathered or a great deal of people are gathered together that at the end of the day, there's going to be love and understanding and hope for one another and best wishes from one another because we are a uh, what we call a colonial captive people. We are here under racism. We're here under white supremacy, which is systemic in everything that we do. You can't, I'm telling you, you can't even go to a gas station and not sense uh, some type of capitalism, racism, white supremacy, whether it's exhibited from people who don't look like you or people who look like you. And in that case, it becomes more what we call either class or tribal tribal in its, in its manifestations. So we want to uh, encourage us that we have to analyze it, analyze where all of these actions and behaviors are so that we can begin to transform and to change. Because remember, we're building a new society, one that we have not seen before. And if, if, if you can go back in your D DNA memories, you to remember what it felt like those first few months after freedom, after that Emancipation Proclamation, after that war was over, what we had to do and what we had to deal with in order to build and take care of our women, take care of our children, take care of them elders so that we can live apart because they said, don't come back here. You better find some place to build your nation. And we did it. You and I did it. Our ancestors did it for a moment until they repealed uh, field order number 15, whether they, they aggressed upon us, whether they gave us the 13th, 14th amendment, didn't matter. We were still politically and socially not a part of this country. And we, it, we, we experienced systemic racism from the Rudy to the Tootie and I yield. Yes, indeed. And you, you know, you said, a. uh, uh, uh key thing mama I am you know when you think of high love you're looking at the whole picture <laughs> the whole picture in terms of what it looks like to build this nation rooted in love right and rooted in love of self so when you said a protection of the women and the children and feeling safe let me be very transparent so we can get a, a clear picture the brothers that I know would have my back right and protect me have either been murdered or imprisoned, right? And this is this is my, I'm speaking from my personal experience, okay? I'm speaking from my personal experience outside of my father. He always got my back, outside of my father. The brothers that I know, without a doubt, would have my back, huh? So I can feel safe, has either, has either been imprisoned or murdered. That's, that's our reality. I know that's not only my reality. Hmm. That's our reality. We got brothers now. Huh? 
it can be a dangerous situation. Yet something inside keeps them from protecting. I mean, these are these are some serious <laughs> conversations. We not we not coming uh, flogging with y'all, okay? This is this is this is serious. We get in a dire situations. It's, a, it's an attack on the protectors of the nation. It's an attack on the providers. It's an attack on our warriors. Physically, mentally, spiritually, psychologically, emotionally, socially, economically, there's an attack. So um, I say that to say, okay, this is our reality that we're dealing with, you know, and we're talking about high love and we're reaching and we're striving for high love. How do we rectify this? What does it look like? What does rectification look like in that arena? You you actually experience it when you begin to uh, open up and exhibit high love for yourself because it does shine through. There's something about this melanin that when you woke and you know and you doing the work on yourself, there's this, you know, they, they have this old uh, uh, saying that this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. That light is, is a direct reflection of how your spirit is evolving, is, is elevating. And you can see it when you, when you look and you're walking among your people at the grocery store, the department store, it doesn't matter, Walmart, you can see the heaviness, the pain, the sometimes the beat downness, and then you see others that they're just they're just you they're doing their work they're 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 making sure that they're manifesting what they they believe to be the best for themselves and it's a beautiful thing to see because we can look at each other as brothers and sisters we can speak to each other high love when we know high love exhibits is it is being exhibited is I can go into a space and every single person will greet me and I will greet them of course because I always like to speak that's that energy that we uh, transfer to one another. Good morning, good day. How you doing? What's going on? Uh, you know, good to see you. That is a, is is what we call the communal ex ex exhibition of high love, and that's just a real, real basic, real, real basic. But I'm I'm charging us to just be basic. Can we not greet each other with love and light? How you doing today? Is everything all right? Bless up. We don't even let's let's all of us take a poll. Is that what happens? Take a few minutes to think about it. Other than the circle of you know friends, of course, and uh, uh, acquaintances, people that you go to your 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 um, job, and sometimes even on your job, we don't speak to each other. So that's what I'm saying. High love to one another. High love, knowing that we've been under the same oppression, the same racism, the same systemic. Um, um, challenges that we all have from hospitals to uh, going down just to get birth certificates, going down to medical centers, just going down trying to get uh, some assistance with housing, food, clothing, shelter. There's, there's one way that uh, uh, the Caucasian people are treated and there's another way that we're treated. And that, that's seen even with ourselves. We, we're so highly trained. We're the best, best trained enslaved Africans on the planet to the point where we can do the conqueror's bidding without an eye blink, knowing that we're looking into somebody else's face that looks like us, that has a story, that has a story, has a journey. And, it, and, it, and if, you, if you listen well, it resonates some way, some way, not to mimic your exact path, but resonates like, I have relatives. I've lived that path. Uh, I have some people right now going through the same thing. And for us not to exhibit just a little smidgen of high love, high love, that unconditionally I'm looking at you and I resonate, I recognize you as part of the new African family that has gone through this ma'afa and survived and is surviving. Is It's 
it's something that we have to recognize. We got to do that just on the basic level, which will open up. It'll open you up to receive your blessings and you will open them up by giving them a blessing, making their day a little bit higher, a little bit lighter because you were kind, just kind, just kind to one another. That's, that is the most basic tenet of high love. Yes, indeed. The power in kindness. Let's, let's chime in on some of these comments. We got uh, our dear Baba Abdul. Greetings, Baba Abdul. He says, Greek grand rising, my beloved sister's free to land. He said, death, be death before dishonor. Please understand, please understand it is blood in and blood out. Shay. Land. We got Baba, uh, brother Obafemi checking in with free to land. Baba Abdul said, the sacrifice itself is on honor as well as honoring our ancestors. The storm is coming, silent, but felt. I say. He said, one is known through their actions and deeds. If they truly believe in protecting our women, children, and elders, their actions will speak to that. I say. I say. Thank you. I bid you both my unconditional love and support. Thank you, Bob. We always appreciate you. You know, you one of the one of those strong, strong warriors of ours. So we, we love and appreciate you always. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. Yes. But it is through, it's, it is all through action. It's not just word, it's through action. You, you, you know, we know who, who one an energy is based upon the action. You know, because folks feel like, a lot of people feel like you. it's all, it's all, you know, as long as you talk about it, it's fine. Yet actually, um, uh, creating new habits, right? You abolish old habits by creating new ones. And that takes some time into getting used to, but we have to be intentional about that. We have to be um, uh, um, self-regulating when it comes to that. You know, let me make sure be intentional when you go out. Like Mama Ayo said, be intentional when you go out. Greet your people. Greet them with a smile. Be intentional. See exactly what shifts happen in the day. Just see. Just, 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 you know, you got we gotta put these things into practice so we can actually know it. You don't know nothing until you actually experience it. Okay. So <laughs> so and then get addicted to that feeling. It's an addiction. That's an addicted, addictive feeling. Feeling love, feeling high vibration, that's addicting. And you, you, it'll be very easy to recognize low vibration after that, hateful energy after that. That's right. Sure. And these are the three things we have to put into practice. You know, us actually exercising love, us actually, you know, being love. That's that's the proof in the pudding. Then you can talk about it. Then you can express, oh well, this is what this does. This is how it transmuted and transformed me. You Absolutely. know, so. I, I would like to challenge all of us, those of us who can, and when you do go out, um, go, just go to a mall, just go to a little shopping center and see how many people greet you back. Now, I have been in some areas, particularly in Mississippi, let me just be clear, particularly in Mississippi. I love Mississippi. Why? Because folks is going to speak. They're going to speak to you. I love I love going into the different towns and uh, in Mississippi. Even if they don't know you, they're gonna speak. They're gonna speak. Uh, uh, other places, uh, it's a little bit challenging. It's a little bit challenging if they don't know you, they don't recognize you. Uh, the elders are pretty much going to speak, uh, but for the most part, our younger people, middle-aged people, they're gonna look at you like, who you who you looking at? Who you talking to? You talking to me? Oh, they if 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 they do. If they do speak, it's gonna be yeah. You do, you you all right? Not with with you know with your spirit behind it, with energy behind it, and it's something that uh, is culturally uh, devastating because um, I know when I lived in Africa, you dare not get up in the morning and be walking on the street and not greet someone. You dare not. It is a horrible offense, and that is something that um, we need to reincorporate remember really because we were i'm telling you i grew up everybody greeted each other everybody greeted each other once upon as they say once upon a time 
We just need to reboot ourselves and remember that that is part of liberation, shaking off the shackles of somebody else's cultural paradigm and bringing ourselves on because our high love uh, transcended all, all spiritualities. The high love, the, the organization of the communities, the organization of kingdoms, the organizations of empires was an example of high love. We tried to build ours. We need our empire back. We need our new African empire, our new African communities, our new African uh, institutions that's going to be exhibiting high love from a new African perspective and not from a Eurocentric individualistic uh, perspective. So that high love is, it's amazing. It is something that we just keep needing to, to work on and, and remembering. Acknowledge your heart hurts because there's plenty. Every day is a remembrance of a heart hurt. Maybe something your mama did. Maybe something your daddy didn't do. Your mama didn't do. Your brothers and sisters might have done. Your aunties might have said. It, it, it's so many things, so many layers. I definitely, definitely uh, want us to remember. Um, they did the best they could. They, they, they struggled and they scrappled and they maintained. And the one thing that I love about us new African people, we have endured. But right now, the call is, we don't want to just endure. We want to step out of a wicked system, a wicked paradigm, and move towards what we say, that society that would be better than anything that we've ever created or known before on this land mass, on this land mass. So I want to add, based upon what you just said, Mama, you said when you was younger, everybody used to speak and talk to one another. Mind you, uh, this was at the beginning of uh, which we call integration, <laughs> right? Um, because I always hear elders say, when I was younger, so and so and so, we used to always this, that, the other. I have to, I have to make the correlation, right? In this past 60 plus years, 70 years, we have been faced with integration. Now, and I'm saying this because imagine, sorry, a call came through. Imagine our people used to being in our communities and villages and we're speaking to one another and we're going about our business building, building businesses with one another, creating, we had all of our, we had our own communities at, at some point after after during the reconstruction period up until right and we have seen over the years the demise yeah now imagine you are in the um used to being in community and you speaking to one another you're doing business with another one another you're literally exhibiting high love right we were still able to organize amongst one another and get certain things accomplished right now we are accepting integration into our world. Now we're going into spaces and places that we don't feel as comfortable being open. Why? Because we're in the open and in public with our enemy, our known enemy. That makes you not as open, okay? That makes you naturally. I'm just saying, speaking in real time because I'm trying to figure out what happened, <laughs> right? And to me, that's making sense, right? We have been duped integration took us further and further and further away from one another so because we know this we have to put into practice what mama Ayo just said we got to challenge ourselves we have to challenge ourselves to 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 exhibit basic kindness to one another so that's the challenge that's the challenge that's up and i i think it's a, a simple easy challenge to start with so that we can start exhibiting high love towards one another again. You know, also be kind to yourself. You understand? We The conversations that we have with ourselves is horrific. Okay? We got to start having more kinder conversations with ourselves as well. All right? Offering ourselves a little bit more grace and understanding and understanding. And, of course, rectifying those things that you, you know, you feel like you need to tighten up on self-analysis is a wonderful thing but make sure you're doing a self-analysis so that you can improve self versus beat yourself down and there's no improvement 
you just feel bad after <laughs> your conversation with self. No, you should feel motivated after your conversation with self. Identify your issues that you're having, some things that you want to rectify within self, and then diligently say, okay, this is how I'm about to rectify it, and you take those necessary steps, you know? But let's let's start with kindness with self and kindness with others. I think that's a good place to start so that we can rebuild this that we have really, really, it's just really bad, y'all. You know, it's it's getting it's getting it's getting ridiculous, you know. So um I think our time is dwindling down, Mama Ayo. Do we want to go ahead and go into our closing remarks? Yes. I just want everybody to um, remember that uh, high love is not just a thought, it's a manifestation. It, it is an elevation of your consciousness, an elevation of your heart. It is literally making sure that your heart chakra opens up so it leads to the activation of all the other chakras from your throat to your stomach, you know, your organs, your grounding, all the way up to your higher, higher, higher self. So when, that's why, uh, interestingly enough, when you talk about um, stones or uh, the crystals for the chakras, the heart has usually two main stones, two colors that it likes to work with, which is the pinker stones, the pink stones, and of course the green stones. Uh, we like to use rose quartz. Rose quartz is really, really good when you do your um, investigations on dealing with heart traumas, making sure that your your heart is being opened, that you're uh, laying the way for love for self and love for others. And in that green stone, it's also a really, really powerful stone to help you travel past, through past injuries, you know, past hurts. So because you, you, you and I, we know we have epigenetic issues in our DNA and we, we have chosen this path to show to show our clans, to show our families that whatever is going on, we're gonna deal with that trauma and we're gonna be the ones in our families to possibly do that and hopefully pass it on to our children and our grandchildren so that they know the thing, the thing that we lack is that the oral histories got lost because our people were tired anxious, trying to work. And some of them stories weren't told and passed down. Recipes were lost. I mean, important information about family members were lost. Those are traumas because the ancestors, I don't care what you say, they say, call my name. You don't know their names? They say, call my name so that I can be with you. I can be at your side. I can be in the whirlwind with you. When we, when we wage this final, 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 uh, I say, uh, effort to free ourselves and to free the land. I yield. Yes, indeed. Um, and, you know, like I said, y'all, taking into consideration what Mama Ayo just said, like this is constant, a constant, constant. We constantly have to strive to be our higher, best, greatest selves in the midst of psychological warfare, chemical warfare. Like we are at war. You understand what I'm saying? This is a spiritual war. So you have to be in full control of I and I self. All right? Because there's a lot of distractions. I'm talking about so many different types of distractions constantly coming at you all the time. Specifically, if you um, take a stance in terms of who you are, what you are, if you know who you are on the planet, if you know your mission and purpose, and if you are zero in and, and, and diligent about that, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's coming, you know, and, and we have to be able to push through and navigate through in our highest height and our highest love possible, because I promise you, that's, what's going to <laughs> make sure that you are always on the sunny side of the hill, period always in always okay that's what makes us strong that's what makes us triumphant when we operate in this high love it is totally indestructible okay nobody you you understand what i'm saying these are we're sharing war tactics with you when you exhibit high love and you stand on that you want love, you want understanding, you want to build. Your goal is to build versus destroy. 
you're always gonna win. Just gotta keep 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 focused and keep going, right? Because we are at war. I don't wanna, you know, we're not sugarcoating it. This is warfare, it's spiritual warfare. Yet we have the tools necessary to be triumphant, to be victorious. The, the, the tools is our birthright. It's nothing that we have to look outside of ourselves for. It's already present right here in our heart. But yet we just have to, like Mama Ayo says, do what is necessary to make sure our heart is as light as a feather. <laughs> it's light as a feather. Our intentions are as pure as they can possibly be. And our intentions is love and our intentions are to build versus destroy. Because everything that, whatever your intentions are, whatever you put out there, that's what's about to come for you. Okay, you got to pay for everything. It's not free. So, um, we are coming down to the close of our show. This is Foundations of a Nation every Tuesday around about 10 a.m. You can check us out. We are here. We are, of course, a part of the New African Broadcast Association where this is one of the five shows during the week. Um, Thursday, you can check out Conversations Between Comrades, which is hosted by our dear brother, Brother Prophecy. And sometimes in and out, we have our uh, dear brother Ativa. Yet, you know, due to his 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 condition, sometimes he's not available, right? Um, and then, of course, on Friday, we have the Truth and Power Corner with Melly Queen, who's um, a blog talk radio. That's a blog talk radio show that happens around about 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Coming back around on Sunday, we have the Voices of New Africa, which is a radio show on AM radio, yet they do chime in with the public, the, the Facebook public around 1.30ish, all right, p.m. Um, Central Standard Time. And of course, on Mondays, you have the New African Perspective show hosted by ourselves and Brother Prophecy, where we discuss, you know, current, current, um, current events different things that's happening in our communities from an African, uh, new African perspective. And we also have a, a, a general topic that we discuss. We also delve into um, literature in our, our literature in our cadre corner that that is good to go over amongst our different um, unit work study and training groups and cadre, right? Um, and we also have a, a Black Power file as well, where we honor um, one of our honorable, <laughs> right? So be sure to chime in. Be sure to chime in. Um, we look forward to seeing you next week. Anything else, Mama Aya, you want to say? Just remain vigilant. Remain vigilant, comrades. Free the land. All right. Free the land. Never fall. Never, never.